today we are going to be doing an Adobe Fresco deep dive. I feel that watching this video will help you get a more full experience with the app and enjoy it even more. Grab your tablet, grab your stylus, let's go. All right, so starting off, we are going to be looking at the nudge feature. So, as you can see, I'm going to select my transform tool and there is a bounding box around this object to nudge. So in the upper right hand corner here, there's this icon with like a bounding box and an arrow. And when you press that, you see these arrows will pop up and these two bars in the middle can be used to move them around on your screen. And you literally just hit the arrows to nudge <laughs> and it moves the object, whatever is being isolated, with just like a more of a precision. So I really like using it for very fine-tuned, careful movements of objects on my screen. So nudge tool, super useful. Use it, and if you don't want to use it, you can simply click that icon to hide that feature. Next, we're going to be talking about IDing layer types. So as you may know, in Adobe Fresco, you're able to use both raster and vector graphics. And because of this, the Fresco team was very intentional and deliberate in their design of keeping raster elements and vector elements separated on your canvas. So as you can see, all of these are pixel or raster elements. And the way that I can tell is by this little icon that sort of looks like a bunch of dotted grids in a little circle here. So that identifies to me that this is a pixel layer. So what happens if I try to draw with something that's vector? So I'm going to select a vector brush, just any one. So as you can see, a new layer was automatically created. And this layer has an identifier that has a blue dot icon on it. So that shows that the elements on this layer are vector elements. So if I try switching to a pixel brush, for example, it'll default to creating a new layer and it will not allow you to mix the elements on this layer with a vector element. Another thing to note is that this layer being a vector layer, I can tap the layer once, and here you'll see convert to pixel layer. This will be an option that's only available for your vector layer. So I can tap this layer once and convert it to a pixel layer if I like, or as you can see, if I hit merge to merge this layer down, with a pixel layer, this will default to becoming a pixel layer. Pixel layers cannot be turned into vector layers. Only vector layers can be turned into pixel layers. So it's just something to note and be mindful of as you navigate through the app and you are mixing different kinds of elements and understanding how the app will respond to certain elements being on your canvas. So now I'm going to be showing you guys drawing aids a little bit more in detail than I did in my beginner video. So in the bottom left hand corner here, you have your drawing aids, which is where your ruler, your circle square, and polygon live. If you select polygon, it'll default to a triangle, but just hitting this plus icon will add additional sides to your polygons. And then circle and square are self-explanatory. So drawing aids can be a little tricky to use in the beginning, I feel, and if you don't really know how to navigate. So by default, pulling your corners will scale your shape proportionally. You can squish <laughs> by pulling in the sides. You can rotate using this piece that sticks up from the top of the bounding box. Basically, I'm just sort of mimicking the shape of this O from my piece here. And I'll just change my color to red so it shows. But basically, drawing aids can be used for tracing or filling. So I can take my fill tool here at once and make sure your bounding box isn't visible anymore. 
Now, undo and redo do not affect the drawing aid in any way. It only affects the things that are on your canvas. So if I hit undo, it won't go back to like the way the, draw the drawing aid looked like in the beginning. Um, so that's just like something to know. Your drawing aid can be moved around freely like this. Or like so. And it can be scaled like so. But again, if I hit undo, it'll just undo whatever's on my canvas and not change the scaling or any effects that I do to the drawing aid itself. And then if I wanna trace it, now yeah, as you can see, like it's really big, right? Like around the edge. So just adjust accordingly if you want the circle to be smaller or bigger. And you can do this with with any shape really. And we'll just go around and around and around. Yeah, those are drawing aids. So now we're gonna take a look at our selection tool. Our selection tool can be found over on this left-hand side. If you press and hold it, you have a few options of how you can make your selections. So this is just a freeform lasso tool. If you press and hold, you have a few options of how you can make your selections. So this is just a freeform lasso tool. So if I just draw here, I can make this any shape that I'd like in any kind of configuration. Now, this won't complete your selection. You'll have to hit close lasso. So make sure that you do that or else you won't be able to start moving your selection around. So let's say I want this to be a square selection. Down here, another layer panel, another menu panel will appear and you have the option to move this element around. Your selection will still be valid. Once you're done moving it around, you could erase it. <laughs> if you choose, you can just deselect. When you click more, you can invert your selection, which means that everything will just be in reverse. So if there was anything outside of this box, it would be selected and not whatever is inside of the box. You can also create masks. So this will create a mask selection that you can slide back and forth. And you can choose to reveal parts of your image using a mask. And that'll allow you to preview what revealing part of that image will look like. So if you choose reveal, Obviously, it'll show more if you choose hide and then you slide back, it'll hide. So that's just like another way that you can use um, selection tool. It's a very versatile tool. I really like using it because it allows me to isolate parts of my image and it's really useful. And I think that the way that it operates in Fresco is just like a little different maybe to like the way other apps do it. So I thought I'd go over that today with you guys. So this next one is gonna be especially great for my fellow lettering artists. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap my shapes panel here. I'm actually going to press and hold and you'll see that you have quite a few different libraries as they refer to them in the app of different shapes. So you have comics, kind of like fun call-outs. You've got floral. You have anything that you have saved in your own personal library. And then for the lettering artists, like myself, we have the typographic category, which I was so exhilarated to learn about and to discover in the app. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like a gold mine. How does no one talk about this more? So I'm super excited to be sharing this with you guys. And if you don't see these libraries come up for you in your shapes panel, you could just hit this little plus sign icon and hit discover new shapes. And all you have to do is tap follow for any of the ones that you wanna download. It'll download instantly into your app and it should appear right away. So basically, what we're gonna do is, um, for example, let's go into the typographic category and let's look at one of these flourish shapes. 
That's so cool looking, right? Um, so it's so funny, this flourish mimics so closely the one that I actually have pre-drawn here. But um, basically, this is just a preview of what your shape will look like. This is not um, yet, you know, a usable or a recognized element on your screen. So what you want to do is just add a new layer. I've changed my color to black and this little fill icon here. It'll ask you if you want to choose vector or pixel. All the elements in my drawing right now are pixels, so I'm just going to select pixel. Once you have that, you can just transform it, nudge it, do everything with it that you would with any other element on your screen. And I think it's super cool. It's such a great resource um, for artists and designers who are looking to incorporate elements like this. It could give you an idea for how to incorporate a flourish. Um, or if you get stuck with compositions, compositions are like such a vital part <laughs> of lettering. Um, so this could be a really cool composition tool for you to use. So you could just fill it in. And what I like to do is I like to lower the opacity a bit and then I would just sketch over it. But that's like a cool compositional layout idea for you to use right on the fly that's already built up into the app. All right, guys, that's it for me. Leave a like on this video if you learned something new and enjoyed the content. Leave a comment with any questions. Don't forget to subscribe, share with a friend, and help us grow the community. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.